Welcome to Electra Online. Here's our second example, a little bit more challenging, but yet we'll be able to figure out what the true answer is to the secondary method to see how well it actually works. What we're trying to do here is we, we're taking a circular curve, there's a one quarter of a circle, and we're going to rotate it about the x axis. When we do that, we form, let's see what that looks like, well, we form like a semi sphere, a half a sphere. Of course, we know what the surface area is of a sphere, and therefore we know what the surface area is of a half a sphere. So let's see how well this theory works. Now, what we need to do is find the area, and the equation says that the area is equal to the length of the curve times the distance covered by the centroid as it rotates about the x-axis. Now, the question is, where is the centroid of a quarter circle? It turns out that if we draw a line at a 45 degree angle, we know that the x and y coordinate of the centroid must be on this 45 degree line. It'll be somewhere about here, and it turns out that this distance here will be the same as this distance there because it's a perfect symmetrical shape. We're only interested in the y coordinate, we're only interested in that distance. It turns out that the y coordinate of the centroid is equal to 2 times the radius of that circle divided by pi. It's nice to remember those things, the centroids of certain shapes like that. Once we know that, then we can go ahead and realize that this is going to make a circular path like this. The circular path will be 2 pi times that distance, the y coordinate, which is 2r over pi. Now, of course, we need a distance, right? We need a radius. Let's assume that the radius is equal to 5 centimeters. Then what will be the surface area of that semi-sphere? So now we put in here the distance covered by the centroid. It will be 2 pi times the radius. The radius will be 2r divided by pi. Of course, this is the radius of the sphere. We're talking about the radius of the path that the centroid takes, which is basically the y-coordinate of the centroid. Now let's plug in the values and see what we get. What is the length of a quarter circle? Well, the length of a quarter circle is one quarter the length of a full circle, which is 2 pi times the radius. We multiply that times 2 pi, and then we multiply that times 2 times the radius divided by pi. Let's see what we get when we simplify that. We have a 2 times 2, that's 4, divided by 4, that cancels out. We have a pi here and a pi there, that cancels out. Let's see what we have left. This is equal to 2 pi r squared. And that looks like it's correct because I realized that the area of a full circle is 4 pi r squared. Since this is a semicircle, I should get half that area. And sure enough, 2 pi r squared is half of 4 pi r squared, which tells us that's correct. Again, the theorem of pappus Goldinus is very straightforward. You take the length of the curve, you multiply that times the distance of the path taken by the centroid. You realize that the centroid of a, sem of a quarter circle like that is equal to 2r, 2 times the radius of the circle, divided by pi in either direction, either the y direction or the x direction like that. Then you multiply that times 2 pi to get the full path length of the centroid, and that's what gives you the area. So pretty straightforward, and you can see that it does work.